Hey everyone, Roger from Ask the Car Experts. Today I'm going to show you how to diagnose a coolant leak. I have a friend's car that has an actual coolant leak and we're going to go through all the steps and figure out what it is together. Right, another note, make sure that you're not checking this hot. When you open the cap, you can actually have an explosion of uh, hot coolant, so make sure to wear safety glasses and gloves and just keep in mind that you want to use caution when opening a cooling system. This is on a BMW N55 twin turbo six cylinder engine. However, the instructions and everything we're going to be doing today will apply to all BMWs and even in general automotive. Now the first step in any diagnostic repair is to confirm the complaint. Let's take a look at the coolant level and do a visual inspection to see if we can figure out what might be going on. Alright, so confirm the fluid level is very low. The expansion tank is completely empty. Let me start by going over some common spots that cause coolant leaks on this particular vehicle. So the number one spot is the expansion tank. So I have a good suspicion that this probably is going to need an expansion tank. Some other less common spots that you should consider checking is the radiator. So you may not see a very active leak with the radiator. It's pretty common for the two bottom corners of the radiator to start to leak right at the seam and that's usually where dirt, debris, and leaves collect and the coolant actually gets absorbed into the debris and you'll see less of a leak. You'd have to pull the underbody panels off and carefully check both sides. If you have a boroscope, you can go into the corners and actually do a physical inspection from the top end. Um, I'm hoping that the, that is not the case on this vehicle. Uh, I don't think it's going to be, but it is something that if you have coolant loss and you have no other visual spot that you can see, check those corners because most likely the radiator is leaking in those corners. So remember with coolant, it is poisonous. So if you have pets, um, you want to make sure that you don't leave any on the ground where they will drink it. It is sweet to them. So um, to prevent poisoning of animals, you definitely want to make sure that you're not leaving any of this coolant on the ground. So I recommend using a catch basin, which you can get from any hardware store, or just a container. You can use a bucket. Um, whatever you can slide under there. Remember the panels are there so sometimes the coolant goes back off the side so you might want to slide it back, do a little test with some water and uh, just make sure to use caution. I do have a Pittsburgh radiator pressure test kit. Um, this was picked up at Harbor Freight and funny enough I have some more advanced ones at work, Snap-on and Matco. Uh, though I do keep this at work as well because it has a lot of different adapters. When you buy the Snap-on and the Matco, a lot of times you have to buy individual components, which I have. However, this is a universal kit, so it can be used on multiple different vehicles. On uh, this BMW, we're going to use the yellow adapter, and that's going to screw right on to the reservoir. I just want to make it snug. It has a gasket on it. All right, this is the actual pressure tool. It just locks on, it has a quick release coupling. Press it on and pressure test the system. You just basically just pump it up. And I hear a leak. So this is actually gonna be an easy diagnosis. Let me uh, show you exactly what I see coming from the expansion tank. So right here on the side of the expansion tank there is a rupture or a crack and under pressure it is losing the coolant. So this is where the failure is in this particular vehicle and it is quite common on a lot of BMWs. If you have a coolant leak I would always check your expansion tank first. To release the pressure on this you just press down on this top and the pressure is released quick release, lift it up, take that out of the way, and just want to tell you about some other spots. A lot of times, yes, you can get the crack in the side like this one has, but I have seen the seams leak, and you also want to take a look at your cap. 
So this is important. Take a look at the cap and see if there's any coolant on the tops, top underside of the cap because that would mean that it's actually leaking past the seal. Sometimes you'll see it around this drip channel here and it's actually getting past both of these seals. When you see that coolant residue on the top of the cap, if you're replacing the expansion tank, it's always a good idea to replace the cap as well. Now that we've used the Pittsburgh one, let's try the Maco version. So I have this adapter right here, and the part number on this is, says BMW 350, which AST makes this tool, so you might not have to buy it directly from Maco. AST makes it, you need the yellow adapter, as opposed to the blue adapter, which is for E46. So with that screwed on, this has a flip gasket here and it has just like a twist top. Uh, this gasket is replaceable. I had to replace it. It does get brittle over time. This just locks on. Quick twist. Make sure that's snug. All the way down. Right. And same idea. This one's a a little bit different and pump it up this way and I can confirm that my leak is coming from my expansion tank. So this is just a different style tool that you can use. I mean this particular video I'm just talking about how to diagnose a coolant leak. Now here's the problem with this. You may have more than one coolant leak. Let me go over that real quick. So remember your cooling system is under pressure. So if you have a leak in one spot, you may have additional leaks. And if you've had a slow leak, that means the system's never been up to operating pressure. So I could go ahead and fix the expansion tank. When you're done and you have it bled, you're gonna wanna retest it and re-pressure um, test the system because you may have additional leaks that you're not gonna find until the system is now sealed and closed. So don't fall for that trap where you just replace one component and ship it and then you have a problem down the road or your vehicle overheats. You want to make sure you double check, do another pressure test and verify that it's holding pressure. Um, typically you want to go to about 15 PSI in the top of the blue range. Red says 25. These systems um, I'm pretty sure can hold 25 PSI no problem. I know for difficult leaks I have gone up to 25 PSI and let it sit on the car and that helps you then watch it over time bleed down and then you can go and chase actually where the coolant's coming from. So just keep that in mind. Alright, there's an additional tool you can use to help diagnose a coolant leak. And I have the Snap-on version which just costs more money. This is an airlift cooling system refiller, which is a fancy name for a vacuum bleeder. So let me show you how to use this to diagnose a coolant leak. Now a vacuum bleeder is a great tool to have, except you do need a compressor to use this tool. So you simply put it over the expansion tank opening and you just tighten down this knurled wheel right here. All right, you just tighten it until it's snug. All right, it comes with two hoses. This is actually for the fill because it has the screen. Uh, this would go to your tank, and that would go on this side. And this valve I'm going to shut right here. And, th and this has an additional adapter for the air fitting, which has a quick release here on the side. Right, pops off, just push it back in because it's going to be under vacuum. And then this is your vent because you have to purge the system. I'm just going to put that straight down and have that locked like that. And right, this has a press tab and that's how you're going to bleed the system. Take your air, put your shop air or garage air on. And then you bring basically to vacuum bleed this. This is shut. You can actually draw a vacuum on the gauge. So right now my gauge is reading zero. And I press this down and I can put a vacuum on this.
So as you can see, I could not reach the green, which means there is a leak. Now I hear what sounds like a boiling sound. So we're actually sucking and drawing in air through the rupture on the side of the expansion tank. You can see that line right there is actually the small crack or rupture in the expansion tank. So in short, you can actually use a vacuum bleeder system to diagnose if you have a coolant leak. You won't be able to reach the green and it won't hold the vacuum. You'll actually lose your vacuum and then you know that there's a leak. It's actually a really good way to test besides the pressure adapter so we can pressure test it and we can actually vacuum test the cooling system. Really a great diagnostic tool. Thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe to my Ask the Car Experts YouTube channel. And remember, you subscribe to me, I subscribe to you, just like Dirt Road Auto Repair. Great videos, thanks for posting, and I'll be sure to check out your videos as well. And I want to say thank you to all my subscribers.